So if you could just grow one thing in your garden, just one thing, what would you grow? Just one thing. <sighs> Oh, that's a hard question. That's a tough one, but... Uh, can I pass? No, no pass. No pass. <laughs> so, I would say something like this. Summer squash. Summer squash? Yeah. Really? That's interesting. So, if I could only grow one thing, it would be tomatoes. If I could only grow one thing. However, I always got to... I don't know. I might change mine to cucumbers, because I can do cucumbers and pickles. And Can I change? Yeah. All so, right. you're just going to have pickles is all you're going to have in your garden. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, for, if it was me, if I could grow just one thing, I would grow tomatoes. Because I love tomato sandwiches. Mm -hmm. However, if I could only grow one thing and depend on it for a food source, it would be winter squash. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Row by Row Garden Show, the best dead gun gardening show on the radio, the internet as well. Glad to have you this evening. Mama Hoss is here. We're doing a deep dive into winter squash because we think it deserves a deep dive. It's a wonderful, wonderful food source that a lot of people don't grow in their garden. Mm -mm. That they should. Yeah, we hadn't until a couple years ago. Oh, uh, no, I've been growing. I, I, I grew it at Expo. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Five grew, years ago? Uh, a little longer than that. A few years ago. Let me just put that way. <laughs> so I've been growing it for about 15 years. Uh-huh. All together. Oh, okay. So, hmm. how about that? All right. So, winter squash is a little bit confusing to some people because we have winter squash and we have summer squash. Yeah. And you think winter squash you plant in the winter and but summer you, you plant in the summer? But you don't. We grow both of them during the same season. But the winter squash get their name because they store into the winter. Some of these winter squash have really long storing times, which is good. Mm -hmm. Because it provides a source of food throughout the season, long after everything else is gone. It's one of the few things besides onions and potatoes that just keeps on giving. So, winter squash is wonderful in our book. So, you got summer squash that have to be picked as what we call immatures. Summer squash are picked and eaten right then. They don't last. And frequently. Yeah, and they don't last long. And uh, winter squash, once they get ready, they're one and done. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom, gone. You pick them, you store them, you eat off of them, or you save them, you cure them, whichever route you go there. And winter squash take twice as long as summer squash. Or longer. Or longer. Or longer. Yeah. So we have some summer squash that I believe can grow off in 45 days. Mm -hmm. Some of these summer squash is up to 110 days to maturity, so it is a long period of time. You have to have a different strategy to grow these. All right, so let's talk about the family. This family is cucurbits, which is in the same family as cucumbers, gourds, pumpkins, and even summer squash and winter squash. However, then we break them down to a different category beyond that, and we have four different ones that we're going to talk about today. One of them is really just a minor one that we're just going to mention, then we're going to blow through it yeah. and it's called the mixta m-i-x-t-a mixta and it, it belongs to a few in the pumpkin family so if you got those if you've seen those white or blue pumpkins sometimes they belong in this family and the kusho kusho yeah. kusho squash you might be called squash yeah. a lot of the decorative pumpkins yeah they grow on that but they're more about decorative stuff and we're more about what eating eating growing your own food so we're going to focus on the three main types of winter squash for you to have to feed your family. And you know what? I don't think, I don't think, I think you've got to put this on your list if you're trying to grow your own food and sustain for your family. All right, so let's, without further ado, let's dig in. Okay. What you say? I say go ahead. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about, the first family classification we're going to talk about is Peppo. 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 Peppo is for the regular squash out there, the delicata, the sweet dumpling, which this is. Uh, all these fall into this Peppo the acorn category. Spaghetti squash. Acorn spaghetti. Zucchini. Yep. Z summer squash. Mm -hmm. and patty, it, patty pan. Patty pan. And even the aguande that we grow here ourselves at Hall's Tools falls into that Peppo family. Now, the Peppo is normally speaking, if you've got a small winter squash, it, it comes out of the Peppo family. The Peppo family matures a little quicker than any of the other two 
classifications of them. And it has a tighter vine, tighter growing habit. So for you raised bed people out there, that would be the one you would grow. The one this the come country. from my raised bed, right? Yep. It actually grew up on a trellis. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. So when you look at the description on our website and you're looking at winter squash, if you kind of dig on down there, on every winter squash we have, we put what family it is in, whether it be Pe Pepo, Maxima, or Machala. And we're going to go over these classification dates. And that gives you an idea of what you can expect out of that squash on how it grows, how it cures, and how it eats. So Pepo stores two to three months of all the winter squash the Pepo store the least. The Pepo do not require curing. So as soon as they are picked off the vine, you can eat them. You can partake in your winter squash here. Um, they'll store up to two to three months, most of the time, sometimes, sometimes more, sometimes a little less, just depends on your weather. We like to store them just like we do our potatoes and onions, a cool, dry spot. And this has lasted unusually long. Um, this is from last year. Yes, I know. We've used, we eat all of them, but this one here, but we're scared to cut into this one. <laughs> so, all right, so the next one is the Maxima. And this family here includes the Hubbards, Kabochas, uh, the Red Curry that I'm going to talk about a little later on, and Giant Pumpkins. Yeah, it would be the Monsters of Pumpkins. With the them. Monster of Pumpkins. Now, so this, they can't grow. Well, we, <laughs> we can't grow some of them. We've had some failures there, and I'm going to talk about that. So, the blue, this class family is the hardest to grow any of them. And the reason being is because they attract the uh, squash borers and the squash bugs, the vine borers and These squash bugs. The, uh, I was holding this up. I know, yeah, let me move this. The Maxima does, and this is the Hubbard and, and whatnot. So, the blue Hubbard, which is part of this family, is actually also used as a trap crop. Trap crop. A trap crop. A trap crop is a system that organic growers use. They plant this blue hubbard close to their other crops and it attracts that vine borer in there. Attracts? Attracts the vine borer in there and, and the squash bugs. It. And they feed off of it. So you're, the theory is you're bringing those insects in there and they would rather feed on that blue hubbard than some of your other crops. So you kind of sacrifice it. So it's like a companion plant. Kinda. Sort of, kind of. Yeah, but you're, you're giving up this blue hubbard here to the insects, making peace with them at war, basically. Oh. You're saying, look here, I'm going to get each other them blue hubbards, but don't come over here and mess with my other stuff. That being said, that is why they're so hard to grow, because they're attract, attract to those plants like that. So. Gotcha. Hmm. However, they do have the good points. Um, they store three to four months. In the storage wars between all three of them, they store the middle amount so they're they're not the least amount of store they don't store the least amount nor the longest but kind of in the middle there three to four months 90 to 100 days maturity same thing there they're kind of in the middle there so your pepos pepos are going to be earlier days to maturity maximus in the middle there and the next one the shot is going to be the longest it has a long vining plant that's the type plant that's long vining so you need to give them more room mm -hmm. i don't recommend them for raised beds uh, you need to give them a little room. I normally plant these, the Pepos, on 36 inch rows like I would my corn, one to two foot apart because they're going to be dense and they're going to make. However, some of these, these Maximas, you want to plant them similar to what you do your cantaloupes and watermelons. Space them out a little bit more. Let them run. Let, give them a little more room. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to Mr. Machado, which is the last one. Mm -hmm. Machado is the one, if you go buy you some pie pumpkins, more likely it is a Machado type. Winter squash that is in that can. Yeah. Now you may think you're buying pumpkin there, which is in, technically in that whole family there, but you're buying a Machada type winter squash. So we're talking about butternut, Cherokee tan, Seminole, mm -hmm. and Watham. Yep. That's some good ones right there. Uh, of all of them, this is classified as the easiest to grow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, it's classified that way, but I would put the pepper right close to it. But it's the easiest growth. Supposedly, it's supposed to be the sweetest. Also, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. That's a, that's pretty tough against some of those right there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, they need most of them need to cure for six to eight weeks. Oh. 
So you have to cure that. You got 100 to 110 days to uh, maturity. So you got to have an area there that you can dedicate for a pretty long period of time yeah, to let them have mature. Have to have a lot of patience. A lot of patience. Medium to long vining. So they're beginning to get to have room. Room. All right. So the next one we mentioned while it goes to mixing, we're not going to spend much time on it. That's the Kershaw and those specialty companies there. They're not going to not going to come into play a whole lot when you're growing your own food. All of the Kershaw, a lot of people eat that. We've never eaten one. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So some general rules. Hey, me that pepper again. You just keep taking my pepper away from me. <laughs> general rules is the smaller the fruit you want to consume first. So these smaller ones, you want to consume those first, and your larger one of squash is going to cure longer. You can set them to the side and partake in them later on. Store them. One more thing on trellis, and you people that want to trellis out there on your raised beds or whatever, use the small fruity ones. I would not use the kabochas or any of those large ones. I think they would be destructive, and they wouldn't uh, turn out very well for you. Now I'm going to let you talk about preparing them and how we eat them. Okay. Can I hold it? You can. You'll give it back. <laughs> so I take them, um, I like to slice them and take the seeds out and then turn them um, face down on my roasting pan. It's one of my favorite ways to do it. We've also done it on the grill. And then we also stuff them. We take some sausage or bacon, mix it up with the meaty part. And then last year for the first time, I actually canned some. And we've got one jar left of this. Um, we'll definitely do a lot more of this next time. Mm -hmm. So not only do they store well, but if you can them, you can get what? Like a year out of them? Mm -hmm. Sure. And we use these for soups. Just out of the jar, snacks. Just out of the jar. They're pretty good. And this is in its own juice, isn't it? Right. Not even warmed up. Nope. Good. For a quick meal that you can reach up there, boom, boom, pour in the boiler. That's good. Mix your little uh, pork in with that. Mm -hmm. A little bacon. A little hog meat. Mm -hmm. A little bacon grease. Always. Ooh, what you talking about? All right, so what we did, ladies and gentlemen, is we picked out the 10 winter squash that we think you should be growing. And we're going to go through these 10 and we're going to talk about each one of them. Now we got way more than 10 on our website and it was a hard choice to pick 10, but we did. So we picked 10 and we're going in order of least to most. Mm -hmm. So number one is going to be our most yeah. recommended variety and number 10 out of the one through 10 is going to be the least recommended variety. So we're going from 10 to one. Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? Number one is acorn squash. Which is pepo. Which is in the pepo family. And the reason Acorn made the number 10 slot, Mama Hoss, is because it is such popular, pop popularity. Why would it be number 10 if it was popular? That's the reason oh, it it's made less. it. It's I'm lost here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The Acorn made the list because of its popularity. Oh, okay. Not the it's key. not our okay. most popular, but the cause okay. of the popularity. There's a lot of content out there on recipes for mm -hmm. acorn squash. It's you, sweet and nutty. Yeah, you go to the grocery store, more likely that's what you can find. Yeah. So that's the reason it made the top 10 list, Mama Hoss. Are you I think we don't like it as well because it's real fibrous. It is fibrous, but still it deserves a spot on, right. on the top 10. I agree. Ones. Go ahead. Uh, for, especially for somebody just beginning. All right, number nine. The one that made number nine squat, uh, spot is... Red curry. Red curry, which is the one I'm growing this year, which is in the Maxima, Maxima. classification, which theoretically is one of the hardest ones to grow. I'm going to grow that. I'm going to grow it in the springtime because here in Zone 8, we do better growing these things in the springtime. And we'll plant one of the pepo varieties more likely for our fall crop. Now, you guys in Zone 7 and 6 and all that, heck, y'all can probably grow them whenever you want to. Y'all can grow them and have them for the fall. Us down here in the deep south, we got to manipulate things just a little bit because we have such insect pressure and disease pressure. And, you know, in July, first of August, we have a hard time growing anything. So we need those shorter season ones in the fall that we can plant out there and get them out and get them over with before the insects take us over. So I wouldn't plant a Maximus, one in the Maximus family in the fall. I would plant it in springtime as I'm going to do here with the red curry. And then follow it with a pepo. So you basically do it just like summer squash. It's just going to take longer. 
Yeah. Some of them. Yeah, and I would change my family around the, to suit the, the insect pressure we're going to have on that. All right, number eight, Georgia Candy Roaster. I had to put Georgia Candy Roaster in it because it is a great heirloom variety and it had the name Georgia in it. That we been, just started carrying we it. We just started carrying it. We've been hunting for a couple of years to get a source for these, and we got them up in the Appalachia area, North Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, a very popular variety up there. If you go to any of the farmer's markets in North Georgia, you will see this there in the fall of the year. It's a pretty pink banana type squash. Uh, got a lot of rich history to it, so therefore that's the reason it made the number eight. Number seven, kabocha. Kabocha is in those Maximus cl uh, classification as well. The reason kabocha made the list was of its size and what it's willing to give. Kabocha is a good all-around winter squash. It's known as a Japanese pumpkin. Mm -hmm. It's got good flavor to it, but there's a lot of meat inside there, so you got a lot to deal with there. I would grow it in the springtime. I'm probably going to put it on my list next year to grow in the springtime. And it tastes like a cross between a pumpkin and a sweet potato. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good one. Very good food source there. All right. Number six on the list. Hoss butternut. Mm -hmm. A shot of family. And I put the Hoss butternut on there because there again, it's a machada. It's going to be easier to grow, but yet it's going to be a huge fruit. Now these things are known for their large yields. A lot of fruit per plant and uh, it's very productive. It's a, just a good one. I like to roast it. Yeah, but this is one of the bigger ones. Now if you if you want a small butternut, this ain't yours right here. This is a big yeah. butternut right uh, here. It's got moss. It's a hybrid got good disease resistance to it. Yeah. <laughs> good disease resistance to it as well. Number five. Is South Anna. South Anna is in the Machada family as well. Here's the interesting thing about South Anna. South Anna is a cross, and it is crossed with a Seminole pumpkin. So it has above and beyond disease resistance and insect resistance to it. Mm -hmm. A friend of ours in West Virginia actually bred this variety here, and he did years worth of work on it, doing different selections and pulling this selection out here that's very hardy and easy to grow. Okay. They don't have that classic big, Butternut shape to it, like the horse butter does, a smaller squash, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a good one. And that's the reason, folks, it made the number five list on our top ten list. So number four is spaghetti squash from mm -hmm. Peppo. Had to put spaghetti squash on there because we've become real fond we of it in the last few years. It's a great, great thing to take care of those pastas. So it's a good replacement for pasta for you people. It's a very good low-calorie mm -hmm. alternative to the pasta. Yes, it is. For if you need to get away from the pasta a little while like I do because I love pasta. So once you cook it, you scrape it. And With then a fork. It, yeah. And, and then it then just it, pastas up on it. Yeah. Magic. Yeah. Magic. And it is a, it is a pepo. So it's, to me, it's one of the easiest ones to grow. You could grow that in your raised bed. Number three on the list. Alguan. Alguan Day. Like Guande? Okay. Guande squash that we got out of the great state of Washington. And the, the seeds you get are from us that you've grown, right? That's right. We produce this particular seed right here. We got our start, our foundation out of Washington State. It's a good variety, pepo, tight growing plant, very productive. And for a pepo, it is a big fruit. And stores well. And stores well. We really love it. it turns out nice. It starts when it starts curing out or getting ready. It'll be green and it'll start turning that orangey color. The next couple of days, it's completely yeah, orange. Pretty. Yep. You ready for number two? You ready for number two. Delicata. Delicata had to make the list. I grew the Delicata several times before, but I grew it last summer while you grew this mm -hmm. one. Uh, it's a larger fruit, but being a pepo, you can eat it directly off the vine. Extremely good. And to be honest with you, if you grow a decent size one, you can split it down in half, and it's perfect serving for two people. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I like about it. Plus, it has a nice sweet flavor. Yeah, to it's it. similar to a sweet potato. Yeah. And number one. Number one mm. would be the sweet dumpling. Yep. Right there, folks. Yep. If you've never tried that, you don't know what you're missing out on. These are very, very delicious to me. One of the sweeter ones mm -hmm. to me. And. Uh, we love it. It actually it said it had a flavor like a sweet potato and corn. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we like it. Yeah, I don't think we mentioned number two. This is delicata right here, yeah, number two the, the that we can. can right there. 
So, man, good stuff there. Good stuff. I'm looking forward to our crop. I am too. Man. So, corny joke. Corny joke. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm always looking forward to corny joke. Why could not, why could the watermelon not get married? Why could the watermelon not get married? Because they couldn't cantaloupe. Because they can't look. <laughs> oh boy. Pretty good one. Pretty good one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, we've got Petals from the Past coming up April 23rd. Yep. Um, 9 to 5. Yep. Hope look. to see you there. If you're anywhere close to Middle Alabama, come join us. It'll be a great event. And if you like what you've seen tonight, help us out and give us that like and subscribe. We'd appreciate that very much. It'd help us a little bit to get the great word out of helping you grow your own food. And any comments, tell us what your top 10 with yeah. your squash are. Yeah, yeah. Give us something. If we miss something there that you think we shouldn't have, put it in the comments below and tell us why. If you got a favorite one that we didn't pull out there, absolutely. We love Winter Squash, and by no means have we grown them all, but we would like to know what everybody thinks. Mm -hmm. All right, so we hope we gave you some inspiration to grow winter squash to try something that may be something and just a note we have 22 varieties of winter squash wow. so there's something from. for everybody mm -hmm. there all right now it's time for you to get outside and get dirty <laughs>